same country. Like <laughs> Mine's 1205. What do you have? 1205. No, what serve what company? Uh, Verizon. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. But my other watch says 1205 too. I'm almost 1206 on my watch. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's a no-show. Well, he is a no-show as far as I'm concerned. Did she call Murphy to tell him to get here early? I contacted him. Or is he contacting us? Not us contacting him. We don't need to contact him. No. He needs to contact us. So we haven't heard from him. Well, Fred's eating again anyway. <laughs> Joe, <coughs> did did we tell Murphy to get here early? Um, yes. Murphy, are they left a message for Murphy? No. Are they left a message for Sharky? Yeah, and uh, Murphy's going to be here early? Yes, Murphy yeah. will be here. Murphy will be here early. But they didn't get a hold of Sharky? 1220. I'm sorry? Yeah, you said you they left a message for Sharky. Now, we, we've notified all these people how? Uh, by telephone. Did telephone. you talk to Mr. McCourt? Sorry, yes, I think, uh, I think Iris had talked to McCourt. Let's find out. Yeah. Okay. I just want to know. Well, I'd put in another call to Sharky just to make sure he actually gets the message. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think we need to, you know what, unless you want them here early, I don't think we should be contacting them. No, no, that's them. what we want. We want them early. Yeah, no, I understand. But the re as far as them not showing up, oh, no, no. told, well, I don't think it's our obligation to call them. I don't know about you, but when I go for a job interview, I'm there early. I don't go late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's usually not. <laughs> that's no. usually not a way to impress the boss when you're going for a job interview. We, show up late. we wouldn't be. Or you call up and say uh, right. there's but a traffic. But still, when you're going for a job interview. Oh no. I, or you I call agree. up and say there's a traffic jam and I can't get there. Exactly. Greg, do we have confirmation on that? We have confirmation that Pat knew it was what time it was? Um, they were all contacted by certified mail, priority. Well, was uh, was the time 12.05? Yes. Okay. With their time. And uh, from my understanding, and also Mr. Murphy is going to be here at... Uh, He's here. Here he is. Mr. Murphy will be here at 12.20. So. Okay. Can we, can we make an effort to get a hold of Sharky again? Yeah. Mr. McCourt? Yes. If you wouldn't mind, please. Call the meeting back to order. Good afternoon. Gentlemen, I apologize for being late. I, uh, my morning meeting ran a little longer than it was supposed to, so. We've got a standard. Um, statement that we're telling every applicant uh, if you have a personal animosity towards the fire department personnel salaries or pensions or have a personal agenda against this commission or commissioners 
Maybe you should withdraw your application for consideration. That's not personal, that's been read to everybody. Um, Mr. or Commissioner Fitzgerald. Good afternoon, Patrick. Yes, sir. Um, you run for this, have you run for this position before? Yes. Yeah. Ed, Ed, I apologize that I cannot hear very well. So if My you fault. Would, yeah, I, have I would a appreciate microphone that. And I Thank should you. use it. My fault. Um, I know you've run for this position before, and, uh, and we welcome you, and thank you for running again, by the way. Um, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about the, the department. We're now involved in an EMS um, dispute with the uh, Lee County Commissioners in reference to bringing fire department uh, EMS ambulances into the fire department. Do you have an opinion on whether that is a good move or a bad move? Uh, yes. Could you share it with us? <laughs> well, you recall about four years ago now, I ran for the position. Right. And the thrust of my campaign was uh, that we had to better address uh, emergency medical services, uh, specifically ambulance uh, participation. Uh, unfortunately, um, you didn't agree with me at the time. Uh, you beat me up pretty badly in the election. And um, I think that left a a, uh, an impression with an awful lot of people uh, that you didn't want to be in the ambulance business. Now you've done a 180 degree turnaround and, and I think that uh, what you have to do is you have to overcome that uh, uh, negative attitude I guess that's out there about whether you're qualified to do that or not. I thought we were asking you about what your opinion was. You were telling me what my opinion is. Well, my opinion at that time, I think, was pretty well expressed. I thought what that, is, yeah. I thought it, that we needed, we desperately needed uh, some, some more attention to medical response. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I felt very strongly that the yeah. fire department was the ones to do it. Yeah. So you believe in emerging with the um, EMS ambulances in the fire department? I believe that one or the other has to step up to the plate and do the job in a 21st century uh, type of situation. And I, and I think that uh, at this point in time, both are, 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 are dragging their feet and nobody seems to want to step up to the real needs of the people. Um, okay. Um, what do you think about consolidation of fire services, fire districts in Lee County? I think it's a wonderful idea. Um, it's been battered around for an awful long time and uh, seems to be meeting a tremendous amount of resistance. But uh, from, a, from a fire point of view, I think it makes an awful lot of sense. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if you're aware that there is legislation up in Tallahassee to change uh, municipal workers' pensions to a 401k. Uh, there was some consideration to exempt the police and fire department from that legislation. Do you have an opinion about that? Um, again, I'll go back to my history because I remember talking to the Detroit Fire Department back in the early 70s and warning them of the coming disaster with pensions and suggested that they convert their whole system to 401ks. Obviously, they chose not to accept my ideas. And as you know, the city's bankrupt today because of it, or at least partially because of it. Okay. Um, that's all my questions. Thank you. Commissioner Forbes? Uh, yeah, Pat, a uh, couple, couple questions. If you were appointed to the seat, would you then run for it in the November election? Uh, I guess I haven't made that decision, Fred, uh, at this point. Um, it's probably the most honest answer I can give you. Yeah. I, I won't say no and I won't say yes. Okay. Um, you probably have some people that you know that have told you what happened here on the 27th and also you've, I know you've been following <clears throat> what's been going on between the county and us. Do you have a do you have an opinion as to what you think should happen or on that or no opinion? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to repeat that. I'm just uh, not hearing very what, well. I, what I said was, <clears throat> I don't think you were here on the 27th, the meeting between us 
an accounting commission. No, I was not. But you probably have some people that were here that may have filled you in on it, but do you have an opinion as to what you think should happen at this point in time? Well, I, I think, uh, as, I, as I expressed, one or the other organizations, I don't think both the organizations should be involved. One of the organizations should step up to the plate and, and offer a comprehensive plan for adequately servicing the needs of the um, medical emergencies in this town. Now, which one that's going to be, I don't know at this point. Okay. That's all I have at the moment. Commissioner Conforti. Um, <clears throat> weren't you at one time in favor of privatizing the ambulance service? I thought that's what you were in favor of. I, I won't say that I'm in favor of it, but that we certainly has to be considered as one of the alternatives. Uh, when you're looking at how we can best serve this need, uh, in my opinion, I think you have to sit down with a blank piece of paper and assume that you're starting a new business to service a city of 45 or 50,000 people, whatever we are, and what's the best way to do it? And one of the air agencies that's here ought to step up to the plate and, and do such a, an exercise and then uh, craft their response accordingly. And I think one of, the, one of the players at the table ought to be a private uh, service and let them come in and give you some ideas about how they would approach it. Also, what is your opinion of how this department is being run by the commission? I'm sorry? What, what is your opinion of how the commission is running this department? How the commission is running this department? Mm -hmm. I don't think that this, uh, this fire commission has ever been very responsive to the public. And, and I think that's where you're missing the boat. Uh, and I'm not saying it's, uh, I'm not condemning you for it. I'm simply saying that I don't think you've been responsive to what the real needs of the public are. Thank you. Hmm. Well, let me do a follow-up question to, um, before I start on the questions I have. What are the real needs, in your opinion, that we're not providing? I'm sorry? You just said to Commissioner Conforti that we have not responded to the real needs of the community and what do you and what are the real needs of the community that we're not addressing in your opinion well I think the biggest most obvious one is is ambulance service and having said that for the five years I've been here I've been uh, working diligently on that and you've made a couple of comments about not stepping up to the plate um, we've stepped up to the plate and keep getting intentional walks because at the end of the day the people that we're negotiating with control whether or not we get the license or not. And in order to ever see ambulances uh, in, in Bonita Springs, run by Bonita Springs, the county has to agree to give us that certificate of need. Uh, having said that, you made a statement that one agency or the other should, should do the job. And, yes. and I wholeheartedly agree with that. One of them can't do the job. One can. Uh, Lee County EMS is not capable of taking over uh, and, and being the only agency that does, does uh, first response and, and transport. They just don't have the budget, they don't have the training, um, they'll always have to be a fire department to do the jaws of life, to do the hazardous materials, to do, to do all of the other things that Lee County EMS are not trained to do. Lee County EMS are very, very good at what they do, but that's all they do is, is medical. Um, fire departments as a whole, not just Benita Springs, as a whole are cross-trained to pretty much deal with any situation that comes along. So having said one agency or the other should do the, uh, should do the transport, the only one that's capable of doing both is Benita. Um, I feel that I think when I first came here, I think that communication with the public was very lacking. And I think over the last two to three, four years, I think the communication um, with the public has been outstanding. Uh, we've opened our doors. We've invited people to come to watch the training, to take tours, to do ride-alongs with shifts. Um, so uh, now I'm going to get to my, my, my questions of what do you think we do well? What do you think this department does well? I think you are an excellent fire department. 
And farm. what's your definition of a fire department? Pardon me? What's your definition of a fire department? Well, I mean, a, a, a department that puts out fires, okay, and responds to emergencies, uh, various kinds of, of emergencies. You do that very well. In fact, I think you do that better than we need, if you want to put it that way, okay? I think you're, you're, you're overly efficient in that capacity. But, we, but, but the department itself, and, and, and if you were going to be a fire commissioner, um, one of the things that I think that maybe, I think that there's some part of your education that's lacking with what the fire department does, is the, the very least of what this fire department does is put out fires. That's, that's I, so, I that's so that. far down on the list. Yes. And the reason for that is that public safety has gotten to a point and public education has gotten to a point and building codes have gotten to a point which there aren't that many fires anymore and, mm -hmm. and that's a good thing. That means that the department is doing a good job with that. Um, but th with the total number of calls that we run a year uh, compared to what fires, um, as you know, we're called Benita Springs Fire and Rescue District. And, but the, the number of medical calls far outweigh what we do for fires. But having said that, we mm -hmm. still have to know how to put out a fire, okay? Mm -hmm. And the training and the same number of hours still have to go in. Um, whether you put out one fire a year or you put out a fire every day, uh, you still have to have the same training and the same safety things in place. So having said that, uh, what do you think we need improvement with other than what you've already stated? You said that you think we're a good fire department. Um, what do you think, if you were going to be a commissioner, what would be the thing that you think needs improving the most? Well, I think we should take a look at just the statement you've just made and understand what you said, uh, at least as I understand it. Uh, you've admitted that you really don't have very many fires, okay? I mean, that's, that's obvious by, by looking at your numbers. I can get that in your annual report. Right. And 70, 80% of what you do is medical responses, and yet you don't own an ambulance and you don't do medical responses. You send fire trucks out to my house when, when I make a 911 emergency well, medical call, okay? And, and I've stated that the reason that that is is that we do not have a permit to send, we don't have a license to send an ambulance, and Lee County cannot get to you quick enough, and every one of our fire trucks are basically an ambulance, but they just don't have a place for you to ride in. They're all advanced life support with paramedics and EMTs on them to work hand in glove with Lee County EMS so they can get there and then continue service. Uh, you're preaching to the choir as far as thinking it's a, it's, it's a waste of, of resources and a waste of money. I mean, I, there's no secret in this room that I've been an advocate of getting our own transport. Mm -hmm. Having said that, if we don't get it, nothing's going to change because we still can get there in four minutes and the county can't. And four minutes versus eight minutes or nine minutes is, is a drastic difference. And as a commissioner, if you, if you were appointed to this position, um, I believe that, I think that you would ha have to at least take a look at what is being done here from the inside instead of from the outside and getting information from areas that aren't necessarily factual. I think it would be very important to educate yourself and, and do some ride-alongs. And as I did myself when I first came here, I actually rode shifts and I spent countless hours getting to understand and know what actually went on here. Um, we just do medical calls, that's correct, Pat, but when you pull up on, a, on a, a car wreck on 75 with a car upside down, okay, well, are we there just to provide uh, a backboard and a neck brace for somebody in that car, or does somebody have to cut that car out and make sure that car doesn't catch on fire and pull them out? And that's the part that goes unnoticed and, and happens every single day in this in this community and and i can document that and show you how many calls we run every single day that involve far more than a medical call there's there's a lot more involved in it i mean there, there's suicides there's public mm -hmm. safety assistance there's citizens assistance there's uh, alarm activations there's you know a lot of things that happen uh on a day-to-day -day basis that justify why this department is here and these are the things that as, a, as an average citizen in this town, are, they are, I don't believe they're aware of the volume, the sheer volume and the training that this department has and needs and is trained. To, and, and the fact that we don't have a lot of fires, I believe as a commissioner is a good thing. Um, if you were appointed to this seat, uh, would you be willing, if you ran for this position, 
in November. We, we are a member of the Florida Association of Special Districts and they have a certified district officials training program that takes a couple of years to complete and it kind of touches on a lot of the management side of running not just our fire district but other water districts and fire districts and I personally found it very helpful and have um, just finished my two years of continuing education. Would you be willing to go through that program if you were appointed to this? Congratulations. I think that's, that's terrific. And I, uh, uh, yes, I certainly would. I don't believe I have any more questions. Anybody else have any comments or after thoughts? No. I think you did a good job, uh, Chairman, on explaining. Uh, Pat, like most of us, city residents, is very concerned about the best bang for your buck on everything, including emergency services. But this fire department has moved towards the things that you want. Uh, you believe ambulance. Excuse me, Ed. I, I hate to keep doing this to you, but I'm having trouble hearing. And, uh, I apologize again. I, I'm, I'm going to say that that would be one of the drawbacks in, in serving on this board. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, Chairman Lohan, Lohan has done a good job explaining to you that we have responded to the concerns of you and all citizens on this fire department. People are saying we only have a few fires. Uh, that's not really true. We only have a few fires. We only have a few fires, but that is not the predominant thing we do. We've been doing medical calls for many years, and we have been searching for the ability to transport for many years. That is as close to a full service safety um, service in Virginia Springs as you could want. And I think that is what you want. Um, I, going beyond that, I don't know what else uh, we could do. This board, like all boards, is not unanimous in everything that goes on. I personally believe in consolidation. Most of the board doesn't. I believe in maybe some pension chains. Most of the board doesn't. But we have to live by majority rule. And I do uh, affirm what Commissioner said. We have changed. We realize as well as you do that we have the capacity to do this emergency medical transport better than anybody. And you say one of the others should do it. Well, EMS can't do it. EMS doesn't have the fire department capacity in order to do this themselves. We have the fire department capacity and we have the EMS capacity and experience to do it. So um, I think that maybe if you look at us again, you will see that we are closer to what you want and what you wanted when you ran in the past. I welcome you running again. And if you sit on the board, maybe you could get your wishes. I'm sorry, again, question? If you, if you are appointed to the board, I think then you could have your opinion on what you might want us to do in the future. Uh, would you um, indulge me in a little story about how I would feel? Okay. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I, well, okay, I'm going to tell you anyway. I know that. <laughs> uh, my father worked for the railroad. Uh, spent 50 years with the railroad. He was the uh, package delivery into the, called the Railway Express Agency. They were uh, virtually the forerunners of UPS and so on and so forth. Um, and he told me a story a long time ago. He said, that the, at that time, as you know, when I was growing up anyway, the railroads were king. Uh, the railroads owned this country. They were the most wealthy, the most well-respected, and all this kind of thing. People loved trains. Kids would run down to the, the track to watch the trains go by, okay? And he said the problem with the railroads, in his opinion, and this is quite a few years ago, is that they don't know what business they're in. They think they're in the business of running trains. And they're really in the business of moving packages and passengers. And if I have a criticism about the fire departments, because I don't believe that, that you people know what business you're in. I think you think you're in the business of, of, of having fire engines, okay? And this is, this is a mindset that, that you have to change. You I have think to that's change. That's been changed the same time the railroad industry changed. Not only your own business. Um, was a well, you've seen what's happened to the railroads. I mean, do you want to go that route? I don't think so. No. And I don't want to see you no. go that route. We want to do a full service emergency medical and fire um, service for the citizens. We have the capacity, the time, and the equipment, and the expertise to do it. That's not saying that we have, our culture is only fire. It is not only fire. 
and uh, fire departments have been doing emergency <coughs> service work uh, for as long as I can remember. <coughs> That's going back a long, long time. Um, even when there was a cat in a tree, they called the fire department, we went. If there was a pregnant woman on the street, long before EMS ever came into existence, the fire department went. Uh, if there was a car crash, long before EMS ever came into existence, the fire department went. Um, we're trying to go even further. We're trying now to be able to go, serve, and deliver the person to the hospital. Nobody can do it better. We know what business we're in. Peter Drucker said that was his famous statement to define what business you were in. And we do know what business we're in. In your opinion? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any further questions for Mr. McCourt? No. Thank you, Pat. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. I'll see you out, Mr. McCourt. <coughs> Hmm? Mr. Murphy's here. Mr. Murphy. Bring him in. Bring him in. Bring him in. That'd be good. Good afternoon, Mr. Murphy. Thanks for coming this afternoon. Commissioner Forbes? No. You read that. Oh, yes. Hmm. I keep forgetting that. We've read this to every candidate. If you have a personal animosity towards the fire department, personnel, salaries, or pensions, or have a personal agenda against this commission, or commissioners, maybe you should withdraw your application from consideration. We've, that's been a statement. I have there. no personal agenda. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Forbes, would you like to start? Yeah, I, I would be, um, well, I have a couple questions. Number one, if you f are appointed to fill this vacancy, will you run for election in November to continue to fill that seat? Absolutely. Okay. Should you not be appointed, would you still run in November? Most likely. Okay, good. Well, uh, next question. Uh, I'm sure you've been following the, uh, uh, the running scenario between us and county commission. I'd, and I know you were here at the 27th meeting because I spoke to you. Based on your own observations, personal opinion, what knowledge you have of our EMS proposal uh, and all that. What, what do you, what do you anticipate as the likely outcome? I think right now we have a conflict between the hospitals, and I think that's what's hurting us more than anything. I think that the outcome should be what's in the best interest of the people in Benita Springs, and that is for us to continue doing what we're doing, stay the course. And I think eventually it's going to happen where the people are going to be the winners. Okay. That's, um, that's the end of my questions. Okay, okay. thank you. Commissioner Conforti. What is your opinion of uh, how this department is being run? I've been a part of this for three and a half years is when I first took my CERT training. And I've been a captain of the CERT team and I've volunteered for everything that you could imagine they've asked me to do, whether it's Fourth of July parades, Toys for Tots, relief stations for the firefighters being trained from around the area. And I'm greatly impressed with this fire department. I'm greatly impressed by everything and the way it's run and the people that are running it. And to me, many of them are not just respectable people, but many of them are heroes. In your opinion, do we charge a fair millage rate for the services that we provide? Yes, you do. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Fitzgerald? Uh, I don't have really too many questions. I, I was trying
trying to define in my mind. You got to talk on the mic. I keep doing that. Um, could you respond? Tell me your opinion of what is your responsibility to the department versus what your responsibility would be to the general public. Okay, I don't know if it's very.